What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm Justin Martindale, and let's just get into it. Um, hope you guys are having a pride month to remember. Padam, padam. It is everywhere. Um, it is the blood in my veins at this point. Padam, padam. The most song played of the summer. I'm already calling it the song of the summer. John is out of town being a whore. Um... <laughs> He's really not. He's in New York. I wish John was a whore, but yes. he is not. And I am with Katie, who has an amazing podcast here at the Comedy Store called Horror at the Star. Katie, Horror at the Store. Katie, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I am pickled. Ooh. I am fermented. I am all proud out. Oh, my God. Okay. I did the pride. Um... And it was actually really fun. You know, last week we had WeHo Pride, and then this past weekend we had LA Pride, and it was crazy. It was such an amazing turnout. Last year, I think it was kind of the like first one they did, because LA Pride and WeHo Pride had a bitch fest, and they split up. Mommy and Daddy got a divorce, so they had their own prides. And last year was kind of sad. You'd see like three people under a tree, and like this pride it was like insane the turnout it was awesome a lot of young people too it was really cool um but i want to just get into a little pride recap because i think i did it pretty well um friday night i missed because i had to work i had to entertain the straights here at the comedy <laughs> store and uh evan went down and saw megan the stallion and it was pretty in amazing uh he said she was awesome and looked amazing and i saw the picture she looks fantastic uh so saturday we went down to the fairgrounds now this is what's funny because i love adventure so i was like let's take the train Ooh. to downtown good god yeah because i don't know if you guys know but la has terrible metro systems I it's mean, i didn't even know that they had trains up until like two months ago there's like and i've lived here for two years there's like three trains yeah. <clears throat> and what you have to do to get to the train is you have to take an uber because it's all the way over at hollywood and highland because we don't have any trains tracks or networks i don't know what they're called lines that go west of la brea which i don't know the Olympics in 2028 are going to be a fun one, let me tell you. Um, so I don't know what they're doing with that, but you have to take a train. So from Hollywood and Highland, you have to get to Hollywood and Highland, which is just... If you want to scream out loud in public, Hollywood Highland is the place to do it, and no one will bat an eye. Ooh, you gonna, know what I mean? I'm going to keep that in mind. You yeah. can definitely go scream in public, and people will be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You'll see like Spider-Man jumping out of trash cans. You'll see like a, a faded Minnie Mouse adjacent. Um, and people still hug them and then have to pay them for pictures. Um, you'll see like an Optimus Prime, but it's like he can't be Optimus Prime. So he's like Optimus like Pram. <laughs> um and so we get down to the train and I'm like, I've got this. I've done it. The wafty scent of urine just filled our nostrils with hope. And we get on the train. And as soon as we get on the train, we look and we see a guy and he has like a pride shirt on. I'm like, OK, good. We're, we're going to the right place. And as soon as we get on the train, this guy is just like, bah, bah, bah. and I'm like, God damn it. Can I just have a moment? This guy is just ranting and loud, and I am in my see something, say something mood. <laughs> Try me, bitch. I'm ready to snap. Uh, so I'm in like survival mode now, because this guy's just like, ah, bah, bah, you know, and I'm like, God, and he finally gets off the train. We're like, thank God. So we get down to Union Station, which is gorgeous. Um, but then my friend AJ is like, okay, so we have to take like a walk. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what, how long of a walk? And he's like, it's like a 10 minute walk. And I'm like, uh, okay, we get out of the train station and we are in another world. I'm just kind of like, what is this place? And they're like, this is the same town you live in. And I'm like, no, I don't know her. I don't know. I don't know where we are. We end up walking 
And it is seriously just like one of those episodes of like a true crime documentary where it's like three friends went to LA Pride never to be seen again. Like it was just that kind of a vibe. And AJ's like, okay, now we have to walk under the LA men's prison. And I'm like, what? Oh, good. (laughs) God, so we're walking down. There's no one where we are. There's no one on the streets. It's broad daylight, thank God. But then we see this man and he's on a, on a, a pay phone. Like there's probably no one on this pay phone, but he's just standing talking on a pay phone. Looks like a day walker. And we're just like, let's keep walking. We have, we have to keep our eyes on the prize guys. We're here for Mariah Carey. <laughs> so as we're walking, I turn back and the guy is no longer on the phone. He is standing in the middle of the street staring at us oh. like that movie, The Strangers with Liv Tyler uh-huh. and Scott Speedman. I'm just like, this, this is it. He's just staring at us. And I'm like, oh, my God. Weirdly enough, I have a pen in my pocket. I don't know why I have a pen. That's P-E-N, like a writing pen. And I was like, I have a pen in my pocket. And they're like, what are you, <laughs> okay, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I will stab him oh my God. if he attempts anything. Like I was like, I am, I have become the yellow jacket superior. Like I'm just like, I will do whatever it takes to keep my tribe alive. Um, we finally get to the festival and we're like, thank God we're here. And we go into the VIP section and it was fun. It was such a cool turnout. We, we were definitely away from the general admission, which was fantastic, but we could like still mingle with the general admission. So I was walking around with like, like pretending I was wearing pearls. Um, but it was really fun. There was a lot of booths, a lot of like food, the most expensive I mean, my God, you're just like, I'll have two beers. And they're like, that's $85. And you're like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, saw some fantastic performances. My buddy Vincent performed, um, follow him on Instagram. V I N C I N T. So fun. Like tore it down. He was actually one of the phone operators on the drag isn't dangerous. Telethon. He did so great. We had King princess perform. She was rock star like like giving me pat benatar vibes um and then finally the headliner mariah carey which i will get into in a minute but i want to talk about some of the fun things that we saw while we were at pride so at pride they had a bdsm tent oh not a tent it was like it was like the 18 and up you know chamber Huh? A chamber? Not a chamber. It was just like a nook. Okay. Like there was a little area and it was all kind of blocked off and it was like so 18 and up only. What's that? So a, a chamber. Got it. Not a chamber. <laughs> it was just, you know. A BDSM area. Yeah. The area little, where little, kids. Little corner. Yeah. 18 and up. It's like uh, the adult. It's like the back room of like a video store, you know? <laughs> we're like, oh, let's go back there and see what's up. So I'm expecting... All of it. And I'm a little bit of a prude. I've said this before. So I'm like, who, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I can handle so much, but like when it gets weird, I'm like, okay, I'm out. Like, I don't want to see like. Now define weird. Like how weird. I don't want to see like fists and things. Okay. I can't do it. I can handle a sling. I can handle a spank, you know, mm-hmm. like taboo stuff. But when it gets like, when you're putting things in things that should not be things, I, I'm i out. Um, and so we walk in there and I was very underwhelmed. It was not what I wanted. It was a bunch of horny Ren Fair people. Oh, God. It was exactly those people who go to the Ren Fairs and are like, because they it's the same thing. Like Ren Fairs and BDSM kind of goes together. You know, you've got iron and you've got leather. There's like blacksmithing involved, <laughs> you know? So it was kind of like the same 
kind of like wenchy people. Yeah. You know, there was like some lady and she had like a corset on with her with her titties all like pushed up to her neck and she was like cracking a whip and I'm like what is this? Am I in like this is the Ren Fair. Yeah, so were there a lot of people? No. The, okay. There wasn't a lot. It was just remember a nook. Yeah. So it was just like you did it and you're like okay, there was a sling, I sat in it. I was like oh my god, if I fall out of this or if it just gives way, I'm going to be mortified. Yeah. Plus I was also getting critiqued by somebody who there was a um what is it called? Uh, um, it has a name. It's like a Saint, Saint something X. It's, you know what I'm talking about? It's like that big X that they can like tie you oh, up yeah, to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, well, my stomach was facing it. So I was like, oh, yeah, slap my back or whatever, you know, like that. Yeah. And this guy's like, you're doing it wrong. And I'm like, oh, oh Relax. <laughs> There's, I'm sure, multiple ways to do this. He's nope, like, no, it's only one way. It's you only gotta one flip way. around where where you're where you're out so you can see. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm submissive today. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I get in the sling and I crossed my legs in the sling to take a picture. And he's like, eh, wrong. And I'm like, can I just? Who are you? Okay. I don't even know. He wasn't even that's, like with our group. That's not even fun. Wait, so he wasn't a part of the exhibit? Or was or not the, the corner nook? He was uh, he was just like he was like just a there. friend adjacent. Like okay. I didn't know this he, person. Then he needs to calm down. Well, clearly he knows all about BDSM. That's and what I said to him. I was like, "Who are you? Like, why do you have all the notes?" Yeah. Also, isn't it like BDSM to like, like you can do really whatever you want? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's no rules. You, you don't can, know my fantasies. Literally, I if you want to be turned around on, you know, one of those X things and slapped in the butt, that's then you want to do that. I I I tell you what. And so I had to tell him. I was like, "Okay, what am I doing?" He's like, "You got to put your legs in the chain." And I was like, "All right, I got this." I was like, and now all eyes are on me and I'm like, "Oh god." Like, "Here we go." Be limber, bitch. You can <laughs> do this. So it was it was fun. But then this is my favorite part. Then we're walking through the same nook and some uh, whipper um, was spanking somebody mm -hmm. and was like, guys, get out of the way. I'm trying to whip. And we were like, what? What are you like? And was moving us all. So we kind of got pushed off to this other side. We see Matt Rogers there with his friends. Um and then uh, this old man, like full on, like old, like Rip Van Winkle slash It Follows person. Like, you know, the movie It Follows? Oh, yeah. yeah. So like that, like walking towards uh -huh. me and I was oh. like, well, this is it. Here we go. And could have been the guy on the payphone waving, mm -hmm. but changed form comes over to me and he gives me this flyer and I'm trying to think, oh, I did, I brought it, I brought the oh flyer. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> oh, I got the flyer. Now, I don't know what I can and can't say about this because I don't want to like shame them because I'm like, whatever. It's, <laughs> everyone has their own thing and I don't want to come across as an asshole, but it's but, just, but. <laughs> and there is a but. But, actually, but. It but. is a experienced summer camp for nude men. Ooh. So it says, hang out naked. It's called um, Sea Men. <laughs> Jesus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, is it on the water? No, but then there is a the Northern point? California gathering July 23rd through the 30th oh. and a West Coast gathering in Southern California August 21st through the 28th. Um, and you can spell, you can go check it out if there's any dudes out there who want to hang out naked with other dudes. Sea Men. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. C as in uh, cat, like sea men, but also like <laughs> semen. <laughs> so this old man comes up to me and he goes, You wanna. <laughs> you wanna. You wanna go hang out with the other naked men? And I was like, Oh God, get out of here. <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, you wanna. You wanna fly her? And I was like, Oh no. And he goes, You. You. You'd have a really good time, I promise. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And I mean, I'm trying to be nice. Yeah. And he's just looking at me. I think one of his eyes was dead. Like oh, that good. kind of like yeah. gray, filmy witch yeah, eye. Yeah, awesome. 
And he's like, um, yeah, you, sh- you should come. You should bring all your friends. And I was like, oh, no. But thank you for singling me out of the group. Yeah, well, he's he's been trying to get people to go for years. Oh, for years. And it's just him and nobody's joined. No you know, one else. But he saw you and I was like, you know what? This is here's my one my, chance. Here's my moment. Here's I'm my gonna, hero. What's it called when you like uh, shoot your shot? Yeah. And he was like, all right, I'm going to get this guy. He looks like a tall, strapping buck, Mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see it buck naked. And so I was like, no, you know what? Thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, coming up to me and thinking that I would want to go to this. (laughs) And then he takes us, he takes the slightest pause and he goes, well, you want to go? And I was like, no. No. (laughs) Did I, did you not just hear everything I just said? Clearly all the... All the no's mean yes. It was really funny, though. But I was and then he like we were like kind of hanging around and he just kept like, come. Yeah, you sure. You know, yeah, come on. You I know you want to see all this, you know, I'm like, oh, God. But then. OK, so then we get back to the VIP uh, area and Mariah Carey is scheduled for 930 p.m. to go on. And we are all taking bets. All of us were like, is she going to come out on time? Megan the Stallion came out like five minutes after she was supposed to go on. Is Mariah Carey going to be here on time or is it going to be like, okay, we got to wait an hour and a half, whatever. Two hours, who knows? And will it actually be Mariah Carey or is it just going to be a piece of furniture like a chaise lounge with a wig on it? And we're all supposed to believe it's Mariah Carey. It was Mariah Carey and she gave it it was great. I loved it. I actually have her set list. You're welcome. So for all of those who were wondering, what is she seeing? My friend sent me the um, the uh, track list of what she was going to be singing. And I'll give you her whole set right now on Just Saying. She started out with Vision of Love. She did a Honey remix, then Big Energy slash Obsessed. Which obsessed, she popped up images of Grinder because she was like, I'm here with the gays, you know. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. It's a rap, which is her new single, which is really, really fun. She does My All and a remix of My All. Then Dream Lover, Sweet Fantasy Remix, Glam Moment, which Glam Moment is not a song. She actually had her team come out and paint her face. It was so funny. She's like, I need a Glam Moment. All right. And just stood there while everyone was shellacking her. Oh my God. She then she went into emotions. Then she went into it's like that. Shake it off. Touch my body. We belong together. Then ended with uh, rainbow, which she's never closed with. And then she did uh, circles remix. And then she left and came back and sang hero, which was really really nice and sweet. And it was fun. She she wasn't being moved around. She knew what she was there for. Um, very sweet. Very funny. Um, she was singing with... She was singing live and with a track. She had, like, amazing backup singers. She had dancers. She had an inflatable Pegasus. She kept wanting to... She kept making references to um, Mean Girls... Because she like came what? out with a tiara, okay. kind of like, oh, I'm the Grand Marshal of Pride. And she mm-hmm. came out in this like stretch car or whatever. And she's like, I want to break this in half. And people were like, please don't. That's that's like really expensive. <laughs> she's like, you know, like that movie Mean Girls where she splits it all up and throws it and whatever. But um, yeah, she did the whistle notes. You know, some of it was like, oh, you know, she she tried. Yeah. She She tried. But overall, very, very entertaining. And at the end of the day, I was like, holy, that was Mariah Carey. Like, yeah. Like, but I do want to ask, why didn't she sing her most famous song, All I Want for Oh, here's, for that's my only note. She should have sang that? Or she should not have? There was a way. And people were like, she's not going to sing it. And I was like, there is a way to do it. Mm-hmm. And it would have been so gaggy if she had just, if you just heard the bells, boom, 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 boom. And then she just looks at us and goes, not yet. And we all would have been like, ah! that's all she had to do. That's the one note that I had. I was like, what would have been it. iconic. Uh, it would have been, uh, it would have been so good. Um, 
But overall, I gave it uh, I gave it an eight out of ten performance. It was fun. It was campy. She knew what she was doing. There was some technical issues a couple times, but whatever. You know, at the end of the day, I was like, holy shit! I saw Mariah Carey at Pride. She had a blast. Um, and oh, another fun thing that happened during Mariah Carey's performance was this dumb bitch <laughs> in front of us. Um, thought it would be okay at Pride to get up on her friend's shoulders. Okay. That's a choice. And you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like yeah, when yeah. they just hang out there? Yeah. Oh my God. We all joined together and shamed the shit out of this person. Get down! This isn't about you! Like, I mean, we're all just... We don't care if you're gay or straight or an ally. Quit being an asshole. Like, so those tickets were expensive, you know. Um, but I got in. For, but well, my boyfriend, my boyfriend also works for Amazon, which was a sponsor for the Pride event. So, um, uh, but like some people like paid a lot of money to see those tickets, and this this girl was just like, "I'm gonna do this," and we're all like behind. Mm -hmm. And no, we weren't having it. We were actually afraid Mariah thought that she was like getting booed and I was like, oh shit, she's gonna like call us out. Um, but yeah, so this girl finally gets down and then tries to do it again. Oh my God, is she like drunk? I don't care, she was just annoying. I was like, this is like, we didn't, we're not here to see your lame back. Oh, uh, but it was really funny. We were all dying laughing. And then she like turned around to like leave. Like, and then didn't even stay for the whole fucking show. Jesus, that's so rude. <laughs> if, uh, you, if you are going to do that, you need to go to the sides where it's. Thank you. you know, I am. A, I am short. I struggle to see during concerts, but I make sure that I can, you know, see yeah. in my own way. And if and I have to do that, I go to the side. The seats were fine. Like we were all pretty close yeah. to the stage. And it's like, what are you doing? And it was so funny because she turned before when she was leaving, like she was, you know, heading out of the crowd. She had to like face the oncoming current of hate. People were just like, you know, <laughs> fuck you. And just like, get out of here. You're disrespectful. Oh, you're not even going to stay like this poor girl was just doing a, a Game of Thrones, like shame walk, like leaving Mariah Carey. I was oh like, God. sorry. Nope, nope, nope. But yes, it was overall it was so great. The actual parade itself was insane. We woke up in the morning, um, went down to Hollywood, and they have it all blocked off for Hollywood Boulevard, and it was just packed with people. Um, I actually got to walk with the Amazon team because uh, they were promoting their new Amazon show with Love, which is supposed to be really, really cute. I think it's season two, um, and. You never know who you're walking with in the in the parade. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was insane. It was we were with a influencer. Her name is Drew Alflalo. Okay. I hope I or, or Alf, Alfualo. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Alflalo. Um and you would have thought like Lady Gaga was walking with us. Like there was all these young girls and kids who were just screaming once they re once they recognized that she was with us. And so I kind of like kept <laughs> backing up close to her. I was like, oh. And then I actually had one woman like wave at me and I waved back at her and she was waving at Drew. Oh, so I no. was like, oh, damn. Oh, no. That's but it was pretty funny. And weirdly enough, that same homeless man on the payphone was in the crowd that day. As I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm back. He's but like, it was, I see you. I'm the one waving at you now. Yeah, it was so bonkers. And then because it was my first time actually hanging out with like Gen Z, I guess, like there was all these influencers. There was a uh, uh, Jack Jerry, who is a very sweet guy. He was, uh, he's an influencer. I feel like just one of the kids now. I'm like Uncle Justin now, you know. <laughs> and he was like, "So what do you do?" And I'm like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, "Well, right now I'm dying a little inside." <laughs> and he was like, "Are you a social media influencer?" And I was like, "Ah, eh, not really." 
Um, but with that being said, uh, Father's Day is around the corner and get your <laughs> dad and the man in your life something comfortable to wear. I'm wearing my cozy or track suit. You could get 40% off your final order this Father's Day using promo code Justin Martindale 40. That's 40% off. This is a new color they have. It's called Timber. I love it. They've got polo shirts. They've got jogger pants. They've got pullovers, towels, uh, bed sheets. Ladies, they've got stuff for you, pajamas, everything. I cannot recommend this enough. And everybody who gets uh, this promo code loves it. And then they DM me. They're like, oh, my God, these are the best clothes ever. And I'm like, yes, they're comfortable. It's Oprah's favorite things five years in a row. So, no, I'm not a social media influencer. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. But, yeah, it was really, really fun, like, hanging out with the, the kids. And then, God, we went from Beauty and Essex. Then we went to, like, Capitol Records. Then we went to uh, the Bourbon Room. And then after the Bourbon Room, I wound up with, like, Leonardo DiCaprio's, like, Friends, which oh was God. weird at, at Delilah. I was like, I haven't even been in Delilah. And I woke up with the worst hangover in my life. I was like, and I'm done. I'm pickled. So, yeah, I'm all prouded out. I am hydrating. I am just... It's exhausting. It is exhausting. Now, Pride was, it was good. It was one for the books. I had a good time. Um, but yes, let's get into some stories. What, what, how else can we follow up a great Pride recap than with Justin Bieber's dad being an asshole? <laughs> Sounds about right. Right? And this doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Justin Bieber's dad just went on Twitter. Um, which I'm not on Twitter really anymore. Yeah, I'm not on Twitter. I've never been on Twitter. Oh, really? Yeah. Like oh. I've I've always had one, yeah. but I've never like understood it or knew what to, I just I just don't understand it. It's just it used to be so much fun and mm -hmm. then it just got all like weird and trolly and yeah. like you could honestly tweet like I'm having the best day today and people were like kill yourself and, and you're like, like okay. I might. Now yeah. I might. Damn. That's it's cool. It's so weird. So Justin Bieber's dad got on Twitter uh, last week to share a homophobic meme featuring a rainbow flag with the sarcastic caption, don't forget to thank a straight person this month for your existence. <laughs> dad, stop it. Jeez, dad. The since deleted post came two days after the 48 year old who has four children with three women. Okay, so cool. He believes in the sanctity of marriage tweeted that people need to celebrate families. He added Monday, you know, you know the reason we're all here. The things this generation glorifies is unbelievable. While Justin, 29, has yet to comment on his dad's anti-LGBTQIA plus posts, social media users slammed Jeremy. Um, no one's thanking flop nepo daddies by, God, see, they're just <laughs> brutal. Get them. Get them. Why not? It's Get fun. Them. You should. You should sit back down real quick. So... Yeah, I mean, look at him. Yeah, he's, it's, he, I, now that I see him, that makes sense coming from him. And it's not okay, but it, I, I could see him. But also, what is this for? Like, what are you doing? What do you think you're getting out of this? Yeah. Like, I hate people who are just like, I'm going to post something to rile up everyone. It's like, and like, how embarrassing for Justin, because it's just kind of like, hey, like, could you not? Yeah. He's... Really? During Pride Month? Like, why couldn't you make a Father's Day post or something, Literally you know? anything else. And you know that Justin's not going to respond because that's to respond is egging the fire on more. Oh, he's not going to say shit. Yeah. He knows better. Um, but it is really funny because if you are watching shows right now, um, I'm streaming. I just finished the other two season three, which is so funny. If you haven't watched the other two, it's on max, formerly HBO max. And it is just great. It has Molly Shannon. It's, 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 it's about that. It's, it's about a family who the young son is like a Justin Bieber type. And he puts up a video on YouTube and becomes like an overnight success. Wanda Sykes is in it. There's a whole bunch of cameos from, um, uh, uh, celebrities and everything in it. And it's just, it's really, really fun. This last season was a little kind of like, eh, little, getting a little racy, little, you know, a little sexy. And Ooh. so it's not, it's not for like, you know, families to watch together, yeah. but 
what is anymore? Yeah, right. You can't watch a show together. I literally, oh my God, I binge watched um, Prehistoric Planet 2, which um, it, it was just released on... God, there's so many damn streamers. It was, uh, I think it was actually, it might be, I think it's, it's one of the things. It's not Netflix, it's HBO. It might, I'm sorry, Max, but you'll find it. Prehistoric Planet 2, I think it might be on Amazon. I'm not sure, but it's David Attenborough, right? Mm -hmm. The first one was so good. Second one, even better. It's like all these like new facts that they've just learned about these dinosaurs. It's all CGI. They put them in these like, you know, this is it. This is what it would look like back in the day when dinosaurs roamed the earth. That kind of thing. However, my God, is it horny? All of these. It's like it's prehistoric horn, porn horn, <laughs> horny are, porn. <laughs> are, are they trying to have sex with the dinosaurs? Yes. Oh my God. It's like it's like behold. It's David Attenborough, Liv King. Behold, here we have a female Tyrannosaurus Rex. About to make the long journey across what is formerly North America in 65 million BC. But before she does that, she has to get plowed by a male. You're like, oh my God. Like, so then all of a sudden you see this like male T-Rex come out of nowhere in these tiny arms and these like mounting her. And you're like, oh my God, what am I watching? Jesus. And why am I aroused? You're like, I'm, am I into this? Is this bestiality if they're no longer existing? Because I'm already coming to terms with the fact that they're like not lizards. Yeah. They're like these weird bird freaks, yeah. you know? And I'm like, okay, that's not, hashtag not my raptor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, I'm willing to accept it yeah. because this is the month of that. Yes. It's <laughs> so an accepting like, month. You have I to, will, yeah. I see my raptor with feathers. Mm -hmm. It is throwing me off a little bit, but I'm willing to give you your moment to shine. Right. So, but now I'm like, I don't even know these lizards. And they're like, you know, humping it down on in front of me. And I'm like, oh, God. So um, anyways, I'm sorry, Justin Bieber's dad. You're trash there. I said it. Happy Pride. Um, but it was a great night for the Tonys this weekend, which was awesome. My friend Alex Newell won um, a Tony. He is the first non-binary actor to win a Tony, which I'm very, very excited That's for. amazing. Very excited for them to win. Um it was a great speech. Alex has just been killing it since uh, they were on Glee and uh, actually sat like a couple rows from Leah Michelle, who did not <gasps> win a Tony. Oh, my God. And Leah Michelle, uh, I guess there was like some beef with Alex. Like Alex, Alex is very outspoken and uh, was was kind of um, throwing some shade at Leah, but not like directly. It was just kind of like a nod, a yeah. reference, you know, and Alex got the uh the Tony for their performance in the Broadway musical Shucked. Um, and then my buddy Michael Arden got uh, an award for best director uh, for a play and like got up there and he was like, people called me the F word all the time growing up. And now I guess I'm a faggot with a Tony. And everyone was like, ah! that's amazing. Yeah. So congrats <laughs> to Michael. I texted him uh, over the weekend. I was like, that's so crazy. He's so talented. So yes. So Justin Bieber's dad, Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, but then it takes a turn because I saw this story up on um, on social media this morning before getting here. And I was like, okay. So this is coming from TMZ. It says, here's the title. Trans influencer Rose Montoya banned from the White House after going topless at a Pride event. <laughs> I mean, if you got it, flaunt it, you know? But I know, but I mean, okay. I'm on the fence with this one <laughs> because uh, Rose Montoya, who is an influencer, won't have another chance to take her boobs out at the White House. She's been banned after flashing her breasts at President Biden's Pride event. Rose got the boot Tuesday after footage of her going topless at Saturday's Pride party at the White House went viral. Funny enough, she's the one who posted the video. In a statement... A rep for the White House ripped Rose for the stunt, saying, This behavior is inappropriate and disrespectful for any event. Rose was an invited guest for Saturday's Pride celebration at the White House, where she shook hands with Biden.
Biden and later pulled down her white dress to expose her boobs on the South Lawn with the Truman balcony and a pride flag in the background. In the video, Rose is cupping her boobs and she's flanked by a couple of shirtless men. The footage didn't go over well with the White House, with the rep adding, it's not reflective of the event we hosted to celebrate LGBTQIA plus families or the other hundreds of guests who were in attendance. Individuals in the video will not be invited to future events. Rose reacted to some of the backlash, denying her actions were inappropriate and saying folks who have a problem with her going topless are just affirming she's a woman. Okay, that's that. Uh, let's go back. Let's go. Like, okay, <laughs> there is a time and a place to flash your titties. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, and I get it. I love, you know, the rebellion aspect of it, the empowerment message behind it. But girl, you're at the White House. Yeah, <laughs> like, what it's, are you I, doing? Now, if it was pride. 100% because that's the place, but also maybe not. I don't know. It's again a public space and it's not. I don't know. That's it's it's just it's uh, it's 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 a it's clout chasing. It's um like uh, you're uh, uh, the people before you have fought so hard <laughs> for you to be at that place at that time. Mm hmm. And you took it upon yourself to say, you know what? Let's be cute. I'm going to shake my titties. And, and I'm sorry. No. Like, if that was WeHo pride, yes. If that was any other pride in the country, sure. Take your tatas out, shake them. Yeah. But the White House? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. And did Biden, was he... Do you know if he was around during that time or was he Oh, inside? I don't think, no, no, I, I'm I sure. I feel like he wouldn't be able to see no, what was yeah. happening. I'm sure Biden was falling off a pride float somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. but he was okay. No, As He's just good. He's fine. I, um, I don't think he was there, but it's also like, oh, look what I'm doing for the likes and the followers. Yeah. And, the, and I'm sorry if you're like, oh, you guys are just disagreeing with what I'm doing because I'm trans. No, you don't. That's like me if I was invited to the White House. And I'm like, you know what? This party needs my balls yeah i'm gonna pull down my pants and expose myself on the white house lot no you can't even like how many people like try to like storm the white house not like well i mean january 6th <laughs> but know. like you know what i'm talking about like if people you always see people trying to like it's not like a common thing, but like they'll try to to scale over the wall yeah, and like sure. Secret Service comes out and yeah. stuff like that. Like they're very particular. And I just think that it's like this was just you got you got it. You did it. So I hope you're happy. But yeah. you're not coming back now. You'll, I mean, I, I don't think she if she had planned this, then I don't think she ever wanted to come back. No, I mean, yeah. and that's the thing, too. It's like, all right, you did it. Cool. Hope you're happy. But. Now what? Now what? Now what? What are you What are you doing with that in your life now? Yeah. So, congratulations. Uh, you're a fool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all about like body positivity. And I yeah. love you know shaking what your mama got. I love I love like sexual freedom unless you're a Ren Fair Carney mm -hmm. at a Always, at a yeah. nook. Um, but you know, time and a place, and I I, I stand by that. So now I want to say going from time and a place, <laughs> are you watching the idol on Max? I am not. Okay. I actually haven't heard of it. I, I think what? I've seen some stuff on TikTok of uh, Miss Depp, but that has been about it. So I wanted to give it a go. And I think they premiered it at Cannes this year, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of talk about it because Sam Levinson, who you know is who's worked on Euphoria, has been grilled in the past for being you know too explicit and too um, graphic with some of the situations and um, themes in Euphoria, especially involving high school students. But my God, this show, I mean, I, you know what it is? I'm hate watching it. Yeah. And which could be kink. <laughs> it, you know what? It is really 
fun to hate watch shows. Everybody has that one show. But I mean, like, I loved hate watching Selling Sunset. And this is not that, you know. But this, it's, oh my God. There's two episodes in. It already feels like it's been on for like nine weeks. And it has Johnny Depp's daughter, Lily Rose Depp. It has The weekend in it. Is that him? Yeah, that's The weekend. Oh, my God. I was going to say, but I didn't want to assume. Yeah, that's The weekend. Um, and it's, here's some stats. So this past, uh, go up a little bit. So this past week, no, 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 right here. Right under the picture. There we go. So this past week, um, which was episode two, it brought in only 800,000 viewers per variety. That's down 12% from the premiere. British, G British GQ declared that the episode uh, episode two included the worst sex scene in history. Which is hard to do because have you seen the movie The Room with yes. Tommy Wiseau? Yes. That he is literally having sex with her belly button. So... Is this actually worse? Yes. Oh my god, that's impressive. So the whole the whole plot line is and it's I'm going to be a little graphic. First of all, like if you share a Max account with your parents, tell them not to watch this. Got it. I I I, I can't explain it enough. It's just it's so It's awful. It's not all, it's, it's just like, like there are moments where I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. Like, it's just like, at the very, in the very first episode, Lily Rose Depp plays this character named Jocelyn and she's kind of like a, like a, um, um, she's like a mix of like Kesha and Miley Cyrus and like Britney Spears. Like she's, she, her mom dies of cancer like a couple months before the show picks up and you know she's she she's had like psychotic breakdowns before she's you know uh um she's into self mutilation she's into like um choking loves to chain smoke she's bringing back virginia slims like it's 2002 um and it's just uh, she has like her team of people around her just like making all the shots and the calls for her. And then she meets the weekend and he's like the owner of this like sleazy, like LA hot spot, you know? Um, and then he's like kind of infiltrating his way into her life, but he's doing it in a weird, like 50 shades of gray, like choking her. And then it, and, and the, and the, first episode there is a leak on social media of her having ejaculation all over her face oh good oh good yeah and it's not explained awesome. it's just like well the picture's out and we're like well, who is that like what yeah, is this do we find out who this man is i don't know maybe i don't know if it comes out later uh in a in a future episode but i'm just like god really that's where we're going You're like well and here we go yeah, and so then she starts like spiraling and so in this in in this scene that they're talking about um uh it's the, first of all it only has a 58% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes 26 um uh wait 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 the show has roundly trashed by critics and has a 26% score on Rotten Tomatoes with a 50 58% audience score. So this guy, Sunday episode, the uh, British GQ says it's the worst sex scene in history. And I want to see, I didn't even read what it was, but I mean, so if it's the scene that I'm thinking of, it is, it's so weird because now she has like this weird, like Manson family, like of the bar workers at the weekend work set. They all go over to her house. They're all like taking shots of tequila. Um, her friends get railed in the next room who lives with her. She used to be like an ex Disney ish kind of star. Um, she's just released her new single, which is terrible. Um, and, uh, uh, the weekend is there and the way he's talking to her, I'm, it was one of the reasons that I was just like, Oh, come on. Yeah. So there is a scene where she is performing oral sex on him and it looks <laughs> as someone who's been to pride 
Um, it's not how you do it. It's just it just looked weird. Like I don't think I think the inti uh, intimacy coordinator may have been off that day. Um, but yeah, and the way he's talking to her, I'm just like, Yikes. ugh, gross. Ugh, that's that's gross. And yeah. she's like on the bed, like, ugh. <laughs> and yep, you're just that's like, what, Stop. That, that's what I do every time. Yeah, yeah that's, me too. Yeah, just. <laughs> and ugh, and he's just like ugh. it's just it's just weird first of all i didn't even know the weekend could talk that's fair. right i y'all like, i love the weekend i'm oh, a yeah. huge fan of the weekend i love but, i love his music but, but like sing Don't the acting talk. it's the acting's not good like um one of the girls from um that k-pop group um black pink this is like her mm -hmm. acting debut and like she dances and sings like she's actually really good i like okay. her she plays, uh, I'm trying to remember her name. It's like Diana or something like that. And it's, so I'm kind of like rooting for her because in this next episode or, or this one Sunday, they're like, oh, she's a really good dancer. Oh, and she can sing. Let's put her in the studio. And I'm like, okay, that's what I want. Because yeah, Jocelyn, it's just, oh, it's, it's not. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just it's just too much. So I'm people were DMing me and being like, "What do you think of the the idol?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's yeah. just ugh. it's bad. It's too much." Yeah, and it's like it's like Sam Levinson. It's just I don't know, man. I'm like, what are you trying to do? Are we just trying to make this as dirty and gritty as possible? And also, I'm so sick of this like making LA seem like it's like this cesspool of just debauchery and you know there's places in florida and you know Other, new york yeah. and vegas like it's they, they they just make it like really dingy and gritty like you see them like driving down by the like the strip club on sunset over mm -hmm. here kind of like where the den is and i'm like oh that's on sunset that's like right down the street from where i live or whatever and they're all just like woo you know, and I'm like, like oh, okay, no like, one nobody's does. nobody's doing that. No one's and if, doing that. And if someone does do that, we are like, what the hell are they doing? I shame them. Yeah, we shame them. I That's, shame them yeah, off it's... the shoulders of whoever they're on. Yeah. Now, really quick, did you like Euphoria? I did. Okay. I did, but it's at the same time. It's like, oh God, like yeah. you know, I love Zendaya and I love uh, Sydney Sweeney, and I, I I loved it. I I, I thought it was cool because that's like. That's like nitty gritty enough for me, you know, because mm -hmm. it just reminds me of like growing up in Texas with like all the Plano kids like doing heroin. <laughs> but like um, this is like I feel like kids dealing with social media and bullying and like access to the Internet more so than when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So it's just it, it it hits home differently. But like this is just like. The music's trash. Like no one gives a shit about this girl, yeah. but they say they do, and they're just letting her spiral. And it's just like episode two. Good God! And do you so think I'm it, like, where does it go? Like episode seven, episode eight? Like yeah. Well, we we have to find out who mm -hmm. ejaculates. I know. And now I'm stuck. And I have fate. to yeah. watch it. Yeah. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. But. Let's talk about couples. This one is a great couple. We This happened over the weekend. Everyone was kind of like gagged by it. Uh, Khalees uh, is dating actor Bill Murray. But I think today uh, she said that they weren't dating, which I'm just kind of like, now I'm just not invested. I, I, I thought it was kind of cool. I love a, you know, what is it? A May, December, but this is more like a... She's 43. He's 72. It's totally fine. Yeah. That's like me in the in the Renfair Goblin. Like he yeah. was like, you want to come see me naked? And and I was you're like, like, I might. I, I might. might now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. Um, but uh, yeah, the two sparked romance rumors after Bill Murray watched the bossy singer perform at a recent show at the Mighty Hoopla Festival in South London over the weekend. He was also spotted supporting her at some of her other performances. Sources close to the pair told the U.S. Sun that they were also seen together at the same hotel and have been getting close for a while. A friend reportedly told the outlet they've met up, met up in the States before, which got people in the industry talking and now are meeting up in London while they're both here and they've clearly hit it off. Can they just be friends? I, I don't think if I was in her position, I would just want to be friends with Bill Murray. 
because yeah why do they have to be yeah. why do we have to link them romantically yeah. maybe they just like are hanging out she's yeah, a fan of ghostbusters can... he you know loves uh bossy um which i'm kind of over the milkshake jokes everyone's like oh i guess her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard but i'm like no her caddy shake brings all the boys to the yard that's what it is yeah but also That's she great. had a song called Bossy. She had an amazing song called Fourth of July. She has an amazing song, which is one of my favorite pride songs of all time called Acapella. Oh, so good. So that's that I'm gonna have to jam out to that when I get home. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm kind of here for this. And if it's not a thing, then oh well. But I, you know, if anybody has joy in this world, go them <laughs> you yeah, know yeah and also she got out of like a really horrible relationship with nas like years ago it was like really abusive and public and like so good for her but i also, say go for it but also bill murray is not known to be the kindest human well so who is the kindest human that's true that's true but you know she she deserves the world. Is Bill Murray the world? Maybe not, but for now, potentially. Have a blast. Yeah, I hope he treats her well. I do too, and vice versa. And I'm I I love it. We'll see what happens next week. It'll be like, well, it's over, right? <laughs> like, well, okay. Um, I want to talk about something that has been on my mind for the past couple of days. And that is this footage. And it sucks because I was going to have Michaela Gordon on this week from American Idol who lives in Vegas. And I got our dates mixed up. So she will actually be out here hopefully at the end of June when she comes back out here again. Because I have to ask her about this because she lives in Vegas and the story comes out of Vegas. And it was all over the news. And it wasn't, but it was. So it made the rounds, but more people need to be talking about this. So this Las Vegas family claims something crashed in their backyard, prompting them to call 911 about non-human beings. But this time, several people actually saw it. So on April 30th, around 1150, a Las Vegas Metro police officer's body camera caught this thing flying out of the sky Several people across Eastern California, Nevada, and Utah reported seeing the flash. So, I mean, you clearly saw it. Yeah. It's like a bright teal, could be a meteor, could be something else. But sources tell the news um, that it's likely something crashed into the yard, but exactly what remained unclear more than a month later. So this happened, right? And then a month later, drone video shows a circular imprint in the dirt. Now, yeah. 40 minutes later, same night, this man calls 911 and he says he and his family saw something fall from the sky and that there were two moving things in the backyard. Nope. Bye. Bye. I Set immediately on fire. went to that scene in Signs mm -hmm. with Mel Gibson where they have the alien just walk. Uh, no, uh, absolutely not. Uh, nope. Sick. So the caller, he's just, I mean, he's, I listened to the phone call. He's just like, this sounds really weird, but there's an eight foot person outside in my backyard and there's another one and it has big eyes. It's looking at us. It's still there. The dispatcher says, is it on your property? He's like, it's in my backyard. I swear to God, this is not a joke. This is actually, you know what? We're terrified. <laughs> It was a homeless man with on a pay phone waving at him. No. So there's two people. There's two subjects in your backyard. The dispatcher says and the caller says, yes, they're very large. They're like eight foot, nine feet, 10 feet okay, tall. That's, that's they a look large like, range. <laughs> huh? That's a large range. The, yeah. Eight to nine to 10. I mean, but no, yeah. 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 Fair. They look like aliens to us. Big eyes. They have big eyes. Like I can't explain it. And a big mouth. Oh. They're shiny eyes and they're human. They're a hundred percent not human. So they're human, but, but they're a hundred percent not human. Of course. Yeah, for sure. And the dispatcher says, okay. <laughs> so the Metro police, uh, show up okay this is where it gets weird the dispatcher sent two officers to the home to investigate and now we have body camera footage so this is what actually came out like six days ago so 
The police goes over to the person who made the call. He says, I'm so, so nervous right now. One of the officers said as he's preparing to drive to the house, I have butterflies. Um, saw a shooting star and these people say there's aliens in their backyard, oh which I, be- I mean, you got to show up to do your job, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you're like, well, well today this, could be the day this where is, this is the end yeah. where I see what I fear. Yeah. Um, so they show up. And the officer asked the witness, what did you see? And he's like, it was like a big creature. And he's like, a big creature? He's like, yeah, it was more than 10 feet tall. He is, And then this is where the cop goes, I'm not going to BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky too. So that's why I'm kind of curious. Did you see anything laying in your backyard? And he says, uh, they walk into the backyard to investigate, but the Metro Police blacked out that part of his body camera citing privacy laws he goes i don't believe in it but what i saw right now i do believe in it so what did we see what did we oh god i don't like that at all i don't nope no i'm i would burn everything immediately oh but then like what like do they do like that men in black thing where they just say like oh we weren't here like I need I need a follow up. This is definitely a follow up question. Yeah. Like get these get this family on television and be like, okay, what did y'all see? What happened? Why was the uh, footage blurred out? Well, what? The, the the FBI is probably already on it and yeah. has silenced them and is like, we're gonna if you say anything, we're gonna make you vanish. Yeah. So. They, uh, the police turned up no concrete answers as of Wednesday. While initially open for several days, the department has since closed the case. Well, isn't that convenient? Hmm, interesting. So, I know. I was like, ah! Could you imagine? You're like... I... It always reminds me of like that movie where they're just like, Mom, there's something in the backyard, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's... I I don't know what I would do in that moment. I probably would just stand and stare and probably start crying. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you can't, you think you know what you would do in that moment. But when something's that tall and that like human, yeah. but also 100% not human looking, like, you don't, you don't know what you're going to do. What if the aliens just like looked and they're like, you want to get naked? Come on. Do you want to go you, to a camp called Seamen real yeah, quick? Yeah, you want to go to the the, the all-nude male resort? I'm like, oh, you're aliens. Like, I think maybe. I mean, if they're 10 feet tall, they're he's, packing. He's tall, dark, and handsome. Let's go. They're, they're, if they're 10 feet tall, they're definitely packing some okay. alien D. <laughs> um, but that's not where we're stopping with like the crazy shit that we have seen online. Um, I believe we talked about the shark attack with the kid. Did you see that video? I have not. Sharks are having a moment there. What's trend alert? This summer, sharks. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, the video of the kid who was on his like high school uh, graduation um, party, and they rented out this like you know those lame pirate boats mm-hmm. for like tourists and stuff you know yeah and they have like a buffet and all this stuff well he got drunk because if you sail into the caribbean you're in international waters and you're 18 years old and mm-hmm. you can get shit faced because yeah. sure um we've all been there oh yeah um and his friends dared him to jump off the boat no. and he jumped off the boat and everyone freaked out and someone threw a buoy out to him. And right when they throw the buoy out, you can see this thing swim and he's swimming towards the buoy and then immediately swims away from the buoy. And that's when something grabs him. He comes back up, he's screaming and then he's gone. Jeez. All recorded. Oh, my God. Because that's where we're at now. Because yeah. remember, shark attacks would be like, oh, man, mutilated by a shark or whatever. And we'd be like, OK, well, cool. You yeah. Know, he's got a potato knee now or whatever. Yeah, but like full on like now everyone has a phone and you can record everything. So they have since. I don't know if they closed the case, but there, there's so much that has not been said about this incident yet. Like, they haven't talked to any of the kids. None of the kids who have were witnessed it on the boat have come forward. Jeez. At one point, one of the kids who I believe is intoxicated as well, he's looking at the kid who's off the boat, and he's like, bye. Oh, bye. my God. 
and then he like disappears. Jesus. It, it's giving me open water. It's 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 terrifying. And of course, like all the conspiracy theorists are like, well, that was in the Bermuda Triangle. And I'm like, oh, uh, what? We're making the Bermuda Triangle yeah. happen again? What is it? 1986? Wait, do they know what kind of shark it was? I think it was a... Um, because I went down a TikTok spiral. Of course you did. Yeah. So people were showing like night vision cams and like how to, uh, uh, what, what do they do? Were they, um, were they, were they adjust like the temperature on the camera? Uh, the, the infrared. Yeah. So you can yeah. like see like an image. I think it was, a, I think it was like a blue tip shark. Interesting. Okay. Because Cause... those are the sharks that are there yeah and also they were like it's shark infested waters and i'm like so you mean the ocean the ocean is yeah that's what because that's where is. they live yeah and if well i i'm a big shark person i love sharks and john and i have actually gotten into a heated debate whether sharks prey on humans or if it was just you know they by don't. accident they don't they don't it's, they think you're a seal and they don't like the taste of human no but one that's, does but that's unless you know, unless you're jeffrey dahmer yes you know but also the fact that he th the shark like dragged the boy under fully is i wonder how far like when because eventually the body's gonna come up so when you know because bodies eventually float but how do you know that? I, I'm I at the horror okay. podcast. I've murdered a couple of people, you know. I don't think it was because they asked they asked the uh, people on the ship, and they were like, "Look, this is a highly populated area for sharks because we have like buffets on board, mm -hmm. so it was like catered." Yeah. And whatever's not eaten, they throw off the boat. Okay, that's not... So the sharks saw this boat coming and were like, dinner time, and this thing makes a splash. Yeah. And they're like, game on. Yeah, that's... So they just tore this kid apart. I mean, Jesus. I hate to be graphic no, and yeah. sound insensitive, Hunt... but that's what happened. Jesus. But then, that was last week. Oh my God, but this week... This week, this guy was in Egypt which I've been to Egypt, highly overrated. Um, and this guy is from Russia. And I don't know if you've seen this video, I'm going to give you a warning. Look, there's like warnings all there's over this too. article. So this guy was in Egypt on vacation. He was at a resort at a, a, at a beach at a resort. Um, and he was swimming in the ocean and I have never seen anything like this. I will watch the, if you want to watch the video, it's not like, it's not like crazy. It's just crazy that you know it's happening. And then there's one part where like he, the guy goes like airborne, like oh his, his legs go like up in the air. And you're like, holy shit. And people are like watching it and again, filming it yeah. because they can't go with, they're not going to like go down yeah, there and be like, oh, let's help him. Yeah. You can't do much in that it, time. It, it, yeah. Cool. It could be one shark, Is but it could it? also be multiple sharks. So this shark ate this man alive. And since then, the Egyptians have gone into the ocean and killed the shark, which I'm like, it's. It's in its home. It doesn't, yeah, you're in its space. Yeah. It's not like if, yeah, that's not, yeah, it'd be like someone coming into your house and then you kill them. Nope, that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. But no. you know, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. no. Where it's like, it's it's the shark's space. Yeah, Don't. so this shark in true Egyptian form has now been mummified, which I'm just like, uh, oh, so on brand Egypt. I don't know why we um, are mummifying the shark because, uh, but they did find bits and pieces. Oh, goody. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So yeah. he, uh, this guy was 23 years old. He's splashing frantically before being dragged underwater. Um, the museum that mummified the uh, shark 
extracted half of the man's body from inside of the shark, including his head, his yes. chest, and arms. Soon after the accident, fishermen found the other half of his remains out at sea. The shark nearly consumed all of his body, but discarded the second half after noticing a fisherman's boat attempting to come to the scene and help the man. Oh, Jeez. there's nothing more terrifying. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, no. Well, okay, well... Is that's them finding it? That's them catching the shark. Jeez. You need to we need to see the video of it. I don't know. That might be him. Yeah. Um and he's cute. That's what's sad. <laughs> um shark. No, but it's crazy cuz it like keeps going and then you just see like his legs come out Jesus. of the water and you're like, "Holy shit." That's so scary. It's I... terrifying. So yeah, there's the it might it might be down there. Oh. Oh God, yeah. There's a lot of blood. That's, but it's also it's they tend to when the shark does, you know, kill somebody because they, I don't know, they usually do kill that said shark let's, afterwards. So let's see. That's the. Oh my God. The people taking pictures. I can't. Jesus. But I'm like, is it? Is he in there? He's, I Ugh, mean, that like you just see like a face looking back at you. Oh, gross oh, nightmares. So it is terrifying. I will say, you know, you've been warned if you want to look at it. But I am like fascinated by it because I'm like, holy shit! Like, what would you do if you saw that? I mean, that's gonna stick with you forever. Like the kids on the pirate ship. It's like, yeah, we saw our friend get eaten. These people, you know, in Egypt, being like, I didn't even know there were Egyptian sharks. Now I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's insane. So as summer approaches, just <laughs> never get in the water ever again. Period. I can't do it. Well, nope, 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 nope. Not and you ever see those videos of like, like from helicopters and they're like, oh, it's a beautiful 4th of July weekend and here we are. And you see like the sandbar and then you just see like sharks on mm -hmm. the one side and you just see people like on the other side of the sandbar. Nope. Nope. I'm good. I will no. stick to a pool. Thank you so much. <sighs> but... If we've learned anything, it's that anything will kill you. Correct. And here we go. This one popped up because here's the thing. Do you have a favorite soda? Uh, yes, I do. It is not this one, though. It, what is it? It is the one I stutter on, which is the best. And it's the only thing I stutter on, really. And it's root, 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 oh, 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 root beer. There it is. There it is. We got it. <laughs> 12 hours later, but she got it. I like root beer. Root beer's a good one. Yeah. Um, but... Um, How about you? Mine's Dr. Pepper. Okay. Sorry. I got a pff, Dr. Yeah. Pepper forever. Um, but I have never, ever, 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 ever enjoyed Diet Coke. I think Diet Coke is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. You know who loves it? My boyfriend. And... Every now and then he'll be like, I need to go get a Diet Coke. I'm just, I'm craving a Diet Coke. Or I went to the grocery store the other day and I bought a whole case of them so he didn't have to go buy, mm -hmm. you know, Diet Coke. So I'm like, oh, you got them at home. Gone. Oh my God. Everybody I know who drinks Diet Coke drinks Diet Coke. Like, mm -hmm. guzzles it. And I've tried. It's the one soda that I've been like, you know what? Maybe today will be different. I'll take a little sip and I'm like, oh, God. No. Yeah. I, I I will say there are some Diet Cokes that are terrible, but McDonald's, that is the best Diet Coke and the only Diet Coke that if I'm like, oh, you know what? I want one. I'll have it like every few months, Ugh. maybe. No. But it is but you know battery what? I bet, acid. I bet any soda tastes good with that like sonic ice. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The like tiny little, mm -hmm. oh, that's the best ice ever. They have those machines, actually. I think I'm going to get one for my it. place. Um... But this came out today, and I was like, I cannot wait. So if you're a Diet Coke drinker, you may want to think again about drinking Diet Coke. Or maybe you don't give a shit. <laughs> maybe you're like, my body, my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Diet Coke apparently is so addictive. Addictive. Because I there was a girl I went to college with, and she had a case of Diet Coke in the back of her car. Yes. I My, my mom... And my aunt do that. What? Yeah. And drank it yeah. hot? Yes. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. It's It'd be psycho. like a hundred and something degrees in Texas and she'd be like, Sk-. and I'm like, hot what is soda wrong is with you? Not good. It's not good. Oh, just hot soda on a hot uh, day. <laughs> no, thanks. I'd rather eat people. Fair. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> literally. So. Diet Coke is saying that after one hour of consumption, uh, that immediately your health risks are sky high. The Zero Sugar Soda is a cult classic thanks to its weight-friendly advertising mm, diet. As dentists warn, it can erode enamel and activate the body's fat storage mode. Diet Coke, like other carbonated beverages, is highly acidic. Um, The carbonation process involves the addition of carbonic acid, which gives the drink its characteristic fizz. The acidity of Diet Coke can contribute to tooth enamel erosion over time. Weakened enamel can become more susceptible to cavities and sensitivity, he noted. Well, obviously, that's like soda. Yeah. But there is more. Mmm. So here we go. Uh, Insulin... uh, Production depends on the artificial sweetener used and the presence of diabetes. Insulin is released by your body in response to foods, to partic- in particular when that food contains carbohydrates, and it helps the nutrients get into our body. Insulin plays a role in helping our bo- body store fat. There's no evidence that the types of sweeteners used in Diet Coke, specifically aspartame, uh, acesulfame, acesulfame K, affect insulin, he added. But... Let's see. Artificial sweeteners have been linked to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke, as well as diabetes. Low sugar sweeteners have long been touted to help slim down, but in May, the World Health Organization said that the additives are not recommended for weight loss. Types of artificial sweeteners, including sucralose, saccharin, and aspartame, are all found in Diet Coke. Just 40 minutes. 40 minutes. After taking your first sip of Diet Coke, experts claim the drink, which contains 46 milligrams of caffeine, triggers a short addictive high. At 60 minutes, the caffeine can increase thirst. While Diet Coke contains less caffeine than regular Coke, it still contains a moderate amount. Caffeine is a diuretic, which means it can contribute to dehydration. But a Coca-Cola spokesperson told... (laughs) The sun that the company's beverages are perfectly safe and can be enjoyed as part of a balanced lifestyle. Mm -hmm, Clearly. (laughs) Clearly. They can also clean your toilet. They 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 actually, if you put a a penny into Diet Coke, it'll clean it spotless. And you are putting that in your body. No, Diet Coke's perfectly healthy. Drink it. Mm -hmm. Start your kids out young. Don't even give them milk when they're babies. Just pop a teat on a Diet Coke and let them suck. It's insane. So if you are a Diet Coke drinker, just be careful. I love you and I don't want you to die. Or do you go to the beach with a Diet Coke and then you're like, I'm going to go out into the ocean and then a shark eats you while you're drinking a Diet Coke. Exactly. The way God intended. God. It's so scary. But speaking of diabetes, this last story, um, I'm seeing this all over the Internet um that grimace do you know who grimace is oh yes do you know what grimace is i found out what is it do you know i i believe i know it was rumored that grimace was a what was it rumored that he was i heard that grimace was a taste bud yes okay well, it was rumored that it was like some purple blob, mm-hmm. you know, because we all knew what Grimace was. First of all, I'm over this whole like McDonald's friend thing happening. Like no one was friends. <laughs> like there was like the Hamburglar. There was like, like it was just the weirdest mascots. Like who it was like the, the bird girl, the, the bird girl, and like like no Ronald one questioned McDonald. that. Just have Ronald McDonald. Then there was like the, do you remember when, um. There was the Fry Guys. Yes. And they had those like rocking Mm -hmm. things, which were problematic. And then they had like the sheriff of Burgerville or whatever. And you could like literally just go into like burger jail on the playground. It was just like the burger with bars for teeth. Oh, God, that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like metallic slides that were hot. Yeah. 
And then they had like the the little uh, things that you can like spin so fast that you like fly yes, off of them. I love those. I'm yeah, but I mean, it was just yeah. a weird group. But I guess yeah. that's who runs around with a clown who sells burgers. I like mean, these yeah. groups of misfits, you know. Um, so I guess McDonald's is now doing a thing um, where they're celebrating Grimace's birthday because why not? Why not? Yeah. But they've created their own birthday meal and their own shake, um, plus two new Happy Meals. So this is the meal that you can get. Um, I'm sorry. Anything purple? I know. I don't want to eat it. I don't either. That doesn't. There's, that's if it, you think Diet Coke's bad, that's gotta. That's gotta be even worse. I mean, you could do a half grimace shake, a half diet coke, or just yeah. get it over with faster, Literally. you know? So beginning this week, fans of the fast food chain will have the chance to enjoy some nostalgia in the form of a special happy meal dedicated to a certain purple McDonald land McDonald land icon. Monday, McDonald's launched a new Grimace birthday meal and shake, which includes a choice of a Big Mac or 10 piece chicken McNuggets, a medium French fry, and Mickey D's first ever purple shake. Inspired by the iconic color and sweetness of our purple pal. <sighs> Our fans have amazing childhood memories of their birthdays at McDonald's, and Grimace's birthday is all about paying homage to the amazing fun moments we all share. I don't have moments <laughs> with Grimace. I, I'm yeah, sorry. I don't think I do. I mean, I've always thought he was cool, but I've, I've never been like, oh, I want to buy things with his face on it or be his friend. But also how weird that everyone's like, it's a taste bud. That's Grimace is one Taste bud. But he is a taste bud. Yeah. A purple taste bud. Again, that's a weird group of things. Kill Ronald it with fire. McDonald's. He's mm -mm. got a lot of he's got the bird girl, hamburglar. Yeah. That's but a weird crowd. They are hitting the happy meals because they've got like pillow shaped items coming in called you know what a squish mallow is? Yeah, they're uh, I, I do own one and is I Is it like I, a beanie baby? Like this um, gen's generation's beanie babies? Yes, I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so you get like a pillow. Nothing says fun like a pillow with your food. Mm. God, because you can't move anywhere. Because yeah. you <laughs> can't even, can't get up, can't do anything, can't run. Give them a pillow. Get those. Get, they're gonna, they're gonna pass out from sugar shock. Give them something to rest their heads on. Uh, beginning in late 2023, McDonald's will start inserting popular squishmallows into Happy Meals across the country. According to toy maker uh, Jazuarez, Happy Meals later this year will feature one of the 24 exclusive Squishmallows. Um, okay, cool. But let's talk about this shake because now people do not know what the shake tastes like. It's purple. It's purple. I don't. What, what things are purple that could well, be good? It, it's eggplant. Um, no, not eggplant. No one's <laughs> no one's drinking a dick shake. I mean. I mean, maybe they are on the idol, yeah. but um, but no, this one is. They're saying it's blueberry flavored. Okay. Some are saying that it's lavender flavored. Interesting. Which I'm like, that's a weird for McDonald's. That's but hold on, lavender also helps you fall asleep, which is why you would need the Squishmallow pillow. <gasps> they're making kids. They're they're making kids pass out. <laughs> But uh, I don't, I don't understand this. I did Grimace talk? Yeah, he was like, "Oh, Ronald McDonald," right? I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but what a... but that was only when the cameras were rolling. He would yes. be like, "Hi, Ronald, it's me, Grimace." But when the cameras were off, he'd be like, "I shouldn't be alive." He's like, "I need a cigarette." Please end it. <laughs> I'm a taste bud with eyes and a mouth. I'm an abomination. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Please murder me. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think I don't know. I never had a party at McDonald's I, as a kid. I don't think I think it was sad if you did. Why? I where are you I, from? Wisconsin. That's, that was sad. That might have been sad. That might have been sad. I'm from the city part, so. But yes. I mean, they. Th I will say though, their playground or their play, you know, areas were very fun. But they could be 
sketchy Mm -hmm. as hell. And there was always puke in there. Oh, yeah. There was always some kid who... uh, I, he definitely was too old to be in there. And mm-hmm. you're like, why are you there? There's also, a, like, someone pooped their pants every time. Yeah. And that is McDonald's. Yeah. And I went to the porta potties at Pride, and I'd rather do that than go into a McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I honestly, uh, I can't even go into fast food restaurants anymore. You can't lure me in with a grimace shake. Yeah. Ooh. It's no. like like the shamrock shake. Ugh, get out of here. That looks just, like it's it, again green, green, purple. It's Those like are a, not. Yeah, I not the wanna... best colors to have a shake. Uh-uh. But uh, I, I, the reason I don't go into fast food restaurants is because I think fights start there. Oh. Every every fast food restaurant I see, it's like some woman. She's like, "Really, bitch, you want to fight me?" And it's like, "Oh my god, we're a jack in the box. Like, what's wrong with you? Where are you going to eat?" I well, I go to the grocery store and cook okay. meals at home. Okay, that's that's good. I, that's <laughs> good. That's you know, that's the normal thing. But if I, you if you do go out, but do you have a go to fast food restaurant? Um, not really. I don't really eat out very often. But if I do, it's like, well, the weekend is, does. Is, is, oh wait, yeah, oh, is, yeah. You is, don't you, you don't. But where do you go? Is like Chipotle? Is that considered fast food? No. No. Yeah. Then no. I mean, yes, but like yeah, no. It, like if anything. McDonald's. The only time I will have McDonald's is if I'm uh, flying. I couldn't even tell you the last time I had McDonald's. And because their bre- breakfast food is amazing. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I'm down for a McDonald's breakfast, but yeah. it's not like, oh my God, I need this in yeah. my body right yeah. now. I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry. If the fry stays a fry for like 10 years in your car cushion, maybe that's, don't put it in your body. Yeah, that's not and good wash it down with a Diet Coke. <laughs> Jesus God. All right, guys. Well, that concludes this week's episode. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. I know I did. Katie, thank you for helping us today. Of course. And uh, make sure to check out Horror at the Store, her podcast on the Comedy Store YouTube page, as well as wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, we will see you next time. Also, if you guys don't mind, it would be so great if we got some rates and reviews uh, and some likes on the podcast. If you just go to wherever you get your podcast, whether it be iTunes or Spotify, just leave us a little hello. We love hearing from you guys. And uh, also, happy Father's Day to all the guys out there. Make sure to use that promo code Justin Martindale 40 Go to CozyEarth.com. Get the man in your life something comfortable and chic and stylish. And as always, we'll see you next time here, same time next week on Just Say It. Bye.